Hi, welcome to Rules Challenge. My name is Carter Maxwell. In this episode, we're going to be looking at the game Lorenzo Il Magnifico. Now, for those of you who are new to the show, this is basically just a test of your understanding of the rules of the game. Uh, but instead of asking you questions about the rule book, uh, you'll actually be watching a real game being played, and I just break it up into numbered sections. And your job is to figure out if the moves you watch are legal or illegal. I deliberately emphasize rules that people tend to misunderstand or forget. So in addition to this being a test, it also functions somewhat like a video FAQ. A couple of things I should note before we get started on the challenge. I have the second edition of the game, which comes with a couple expansions, but I'm just using the core version of the game here, except I am using the advanced rule that brings the leader cards into the game. As usual with my videos, we're picking up the action well into the game. As you know, there's six rounds in the game. Three have already been played, so we'll be picking up the action at the start of the fourth round. So with that, I think we're ready to get started. Yellow is first in turn order this round, so we'll start things off with him. He's a bit short on resources for stuff he wants to get done this turn, so he's going to start things off by discarding a couple leader cards. He uh, doesn't have much hope of ever meeting the condition of having 15 servants, so he's going to discard that, and he'll turn that council privilege into two servants. And then he'll uh, discard this one as well for the council privilege of one wood and one stone. However, yellow had earlier suffered an excommunication. That means he takes one fewer wood or stone when uh, obtaining those resources. So instead of gaining one wood and one stone, he'll just gain one stone. Now he wants to play his neutral family member on the one space of the yellow tower. So he'll pay one servant to make that possible. The card costs three stone, so he'll pay that. Then he'll move the card to his player board. The immediate effects are two victory points and one faith. So he'll mark those two victory points and move up one on the faith track. Everything yellow did on this turn was fine. But we should take a minute to talk about leader cards because there are a couple things that cause confusion. First, there's no limit to how many leader cards you can play or discard on your turn. You know, Yellow had discarded both of these and that's fine. He could have discarded all three of the leader cards from his hand if he wanted to. I say three because I didn't mention it earlier, but he does have one that he had put into play earlier. The main reason I want to talk about leader cards though is that Sometimes people believe that you can uh, put them into play during the middle of resolving a family member's action. And let me give you an example. So let's say Yellow is currently at seven faith and has this leader card that he can put into play when he's reached eight faith. He's got some building cards here that allow him to spend faith and gain faith. So he might say, okay, I'm doing a production action. I'm spending a coin and gaining a faith to get to eight. And now I'm going to put this leader into play. And then I'm also going to spend that faith, putting me back down to seven to gain these benefits. So he's putting this into play while he's still in the midst of resolving his production action. That's actually illegal. But the mistake is understandable because the, the wording of the rule book is a little bit ambiguous. Talking about leader actions, here's how it puts it. These instant actions can be performed at any time before or after placing their family member. And people sometimes just focus on the words anytime. But the phrase before or after placing their family member was meant to put some limits on that. Fortunately, even though the rule book's a little bit ambiguous, the publisher has clarified that you can play a leader card on your turn only before or after placing your family member. Now we're talking about an edge case here. You could play several games of Lorenzo without this coming up but I thought I should mention it because I do see it talked about online a fair amount. All right, now Red's up, and he's going to put his family member with the white die on the single harvest space, and that will be at a value of two. Two is actually a pretty low number for a harvest action, but it works out for Red because all his territory cards have low value dice on them. So he'll be able to activate all his cards. 
The difficulty he faces, though, is he also uh, suffered that excommunication where you pay the penalty of one wood or one stone. For starters, he'll take the two coin from this card. Then this one would normally generate one wood, but because of the excommunication, he won't gain that wood. Then this card will give him one coin. Then his personal bonus tile gives him one wood, one stone, and one coin. And since he already paid the penalty for this card, he'll gain all three. So one wood, one stone, and one coin. The mistake Red made was that he did not take the full penalty for the excommunication tile. And I'll just put it over here for reference. And I deliberately put this into the game because this particular tile seems to cause a lot of headaches. The rule book says each time you receive wood or stone from action spaces or from your cards, you receive one fewer wood or stone. But that doesn't mean you just count up everything you receive on your turn and then take one less wood or stone. It means you should reduce it by one for every source. And that would be like your bonus tile or each separate card. So when Red was doing this harvest action, it should have been a penalty here, which she did correctly, but then also should have paid a penalty of either a stone or a wood uh, when gaining the benefits from the personal bonus tile. Now when you've got a card like this, that can be pretty brutal because that means for the rest of the game, this excommunication makes this card worthless to Red. But sometimes it's not necessarily as bad as it might seem. Let's say Red was obtaining this purple card. This is a single source, so the excommunication penalty is only suffered once. So when obtaining the three wood, three stone, three coins, Red just has to choose to lose either one wood or one stone. It's, it, it's not, um, Red doesn't have to suffer that penalty for each of these. All right, now it's Green's turn. He's gonna play his family member with the black die on the single production space. So that'll be a value of five. First off, we'll make sure what buildings he can activate at a level five. He's just got the one building, so this is easy enough to figure out. That has a value five die on it, so he'll be able to activate that building and his personal bonus tile. First off, he'll spend one stone to gain three victory points. And we'll mark those three points. One, two, three. Then he'll also activate the lower part, which means he has to pay three stones to get seven points. And we'll mark those seven points from 14 to 21. And then from his personal bonus tile, he'll gain two servants and one coin. That turn was illegal because Green got a bit too greedy with this building. The rule book says about these exchange cards, if there are two arrows, you must choose which one to activate. So green could have either spent one stone for three victory points or three stones for seven victory points, but he wasn't allowed to do both. Now it's Blue's turn. and She's gonna place her family member with the black die on it in the five space of the blue tower. And as we saw earlier, the black die is at value five and she'll get one stone for placing there. So we'll add that to her player board. The cost of that card is four coins, so she'll pay that, and she'll place that card in line with her personal board. This card comes with two immediate benefits. It has a value six die for acquiring a green card, and she can gain two military points. She's currently just at six military points, and she'll need to have at least seven military points to place a fourth territory card. So she's gonna first gain the two military points, which moves her from six to eight. Then she's gonna resolve this immediate benefit, and she's got this permanent benefit that allows her to increase the value of a die by two when she's acquiring a green card. So that'll make this an eight. All four cards are still there in the green tower, so she has her choice, but she's gonna take advantage of that eight die and claim the top spot. First off, she'll gain the two wood for that space. There's no cost for the card, so she'll go ahead and move it to her personal board. 
And the immediate effect of that card is to gain one faith. So she'll mark that. There are a couple things about Blue's turn worth pointing out. Notice that when Blue was resolving the effects of this card, she first resolved the two military points effect. People sometimes see that and say, well, wait a second, can you resolve these in any order you want? And the answer is yes, you don't have to do them from left to right. Resolve them in whatever order you like. Another question Blue's turn sometimes raises is, well, she didn't actually place a family member in that space, so is she supposed to get those two wood? And again, the answer is yes. Even though Blue was not placing a family member here in order to gain that card, she still resolves it as if she had placed a family member, so she gets that bonus. All right, we're back around to Yellow's turn, and he's going to place his family member with the white die on the one space of the blue tower, and that's at a value 2. Blue already has a family member in the blue tower, so Yellow will pay the three coin fee for that. The card he wants costs four coins, so he'll pay that cost, and he'll move the card to his personal board. That card comes with an immediate benefit of a six die for obtaining a card from the yellow tower at a discount of one wood and one stone. I used to think there was a slash there, but no, it's just because of the shape of the stone. It's one wood and one stone. Yellow had used his neutral family member to claim the first card in the tower, but there are still three available, so he'll use that level six die. Um, he won't spend a servant to get all the way up here. He'll just use it to obtain this level five card. First, he'll take the one military point bonus, moving from five to six. The card would normally cost one wood and one stone, but with the discount going on right now, it won't cost yellow anything. Yellow will add that to his board, and that comes with an immediate three victory points. One, two, three. Yellow's mistake was in not paying the three coin fee when taking a card from the yellow tower when there was already a family member in another floor of the tower. This relates back to a general principle we saw at work in the last turn when Blue gained two wood as if she had placed a family member in that space of the tower. When you use an immediate effect to claim a card in a tower, in all respects, it's like placing a family member to get the card. So when Yellow claimed the card on this third floor, it was as if he had placed a family member here, which means he gets the bonus, which we talked about earlier, but he also, also has to pay the three coin fee because there is already a family member in that tower. And it doesn't matter that it's his own neutral family member. There's a family member in the tower, you pay the three coin fee. Now it's Red's turn. She's going to put her uh, family member with the black die in the purple tower. And that's a value 5 and she's going to go right into the 5 slot here. First she'll gain the 1 coin bonus for that space. Which is fortunate because that gets her to 6 coins which is just enough to pay for the card. So she'll spend that. And that covers the cost of 6 on the card. And she'll move it to her personal board. And that card has an immediate benefit of six military points. And that'll move red from nine to 15. The thing I wanted to highlight from red's turn is that she was a coin short of being able to pay for that card. So she used the bonus she gained from placing her family member here. And that's legal. The rule book says you may use this bonus to pay the cost of the card you want to take. Now it's Green's turn and he's a bit short on cash but lucky for him he's got this leader card in play that gives him three coins so he'll flip that over and take the three coins. His other active leader card allows him to treat his neutral family member as value three so he's going to take advantage of that. He wants to put it in the yellow tower but there is already a family member there so he'll pay three coins. Then he'll place that value three neutral family member on the second floor. 
The costs of the card are two coins, two wood, two stone. So he'll pay those. He'll move the card to his board. And he'll take the immediate benefit of eight victory points. Moving from 21 to 29. Everything Green did there was legal, but I have heard it argued that two neutral family members can't occupy the same tower. The argument there is that neutral family members are the same color, tan or neutral, I guess, and there can't be two family members of the same color in the same tower. That's a bit of a stretch, though, because the rule book even refers to neutral family members as uncolored. I didn't think the rulebook was all that ambiguous, but the publisher has stepped in and clarified that neutral family members are not considered to be a color, so there's no restriction on them occupying the same tower. All right, on to Blue's turn. She wants to place her uh, neutral family member in the purple tower, and she has this card with a permanent uh, effect that adds two pips to a die if she uses it in the purple tower. Blue will place her neutral family member on the first floor as a value two die. Red already has a family member in that tower, so uh, Blue will pay three coins for the right to move in there. Then she'll pay the cost of the card, which is two servants and three coins, and she'll move it to her board. The immediate benefit is she gets a harvest activation with a value four die and she's going to pay two servants to increase that to a six. Raising that up to a value of six will enable her to activate all her territory cards. So we'll run through it. I don't know why I always want to do it right to left. It's like I'm playing a game of wingspan. But anyway, she'll gain one faith. She'll gain one stone and two military points. One, two. She'll gain another stone and another faith. Then she gets a council privilege, which she'll take as two coins. And then from her personal bonus tiles, she'll take one wood, one stone, and one servant. People are sometimes unsure if you can use servants to increase the value of actions granted by cards. Like in this case, Blue had paid two servants to increase this four die to a six. You can pay servants to increase the value of a die shown on a card, just like you would you know, pay servants to increase the value of a die shown on your family member. We're back around to Yellow's turn again and she's going to place the family member with the black die on the large production space. Uh, that die is at a 5, so minus 3, that's a value 2. With a value 2 die, Yellow will be able to activate all his buildings. His problem is, he doesn't have any coins at the moment, and a couple of these buildings require uh, coins for their exchanges. So to get the money for those, He's going to first activate his personal bonus tile and take one servant and two coins. And then working right to left like I always do, just so I don't lose track of where I'm at, he'll spend one servant to gain three military points. That'll move yellow from six to nine. Then he'll spend one faith and gain two coins, and two victory points. One, two. Then he'll spend one coin to gain one council privilege. And he'll take that council privilege as one faith. Then he'll spend another coin to gain another faith. And we've already done the personal bonus tile. Yellow made the mistake of using resources he generated during this activation to pay for some of the exchanges during that same activation. All the resources you're going to use to activate exchange effects must already be in your supply before you start the activation. On this turn, 
Even though Yellow was able to generate coins from his personal bonus tile and through spending a faith, he did not have any coins at the start of the activation, so he couldn't use the exchange effects uh, here to gain, spend a coin to gain a council privilege or here to spend one to get a faith. It's worth noting here that Yellow did have a way of legally making these exchanges if before he placed his family member, he had just discarded a, a leader card. That would have given him a council privilege he could take in the form of two coins and then he'd be set for these two exchanges. I guess this is more strategy advice than rules explanation, but it's a useful reminder, I think, because I know I've found myself clinging to leader cards that really I have no realistic chance of playing. And if you're in a bind for resources, discard those things and, and get some resources from a council privilege. All right, back to Red's turn. She's going to place her family member with the orange die on it in the large harvest space. The orange die is at four, the harvest base knocks it down to a one, so red will spend one servant to bump it up to a two. Now to resolve the harvest, red will gain two coins. She'll skip the wood because of the excommunication penalty. She'll gain one coin for this card. She'll gain another coin for the personal bonus tile. And then here she has to choose between stone and wood which one she'll be penalized. She'll skip the wood and take the stone. Red made a mistake that I'm pretty sure I made the first time I played the game. It's easy to look at these two distinct harvest spaces or the two production spaces and assume they're totally separate, that you can place a colored family member in one and then a colored family member in the other. But that's actually illegal. And just to run through some of the possibilities, this would be legal and this would be legal. And this would be legal. But the way Red had it, like this, that's illegal, and that's illegal. This looks like a good place to wrap up the challenge. I hope you got something useful out of the video. If you think I got something wrong or have a question about anything, don't hesitate to leave a comment. Again, I'm Carter Maxwell. This has been Rules Challenge, and I hope to see you soon.